prayer. It's pivotal. It's powerful. Why don't we do it more? This is a deep subject that can often be overwhelming and leave you ready to quit before you even start. So today, we are going to go over five easy to implement tips to ignite your prayer life today. Be sure to stick around to the end because number five is what helped me the most and I think it will for you too. Let's not waste any time and just dive right in. Number one, you don't have to be afraid to talk to him. Remember, God already knows you. You can pray to him in your own unique way. He created your personality and he loves you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And Psalm 139, 13 through 14 says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Not only does he know you, but he also hears you. 1 John 5, 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Number two, you are going to pray to him again after this. This is not the last time you're going to pray, so don't be so hard on yourself. God wants to hear from you because he's your heavenly father. We see in Jeremiah 29, 12, he says, Then ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Number three, what does the Bible have to say? Have you first looked into his word to see what God says on the matter? The Psalms are a wonderful book that you can open to and just pray directly from the Bible. Pray his words. Jesus showed, us how, Jesus showed us how to do it when he was fasting and the devil came to tempt him. He quoted Deuteronomy. Matthew 6, 7 puts it this way. When ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Number four, begin to see it as a life attitude. Simply put, thankfulness. What has he done for you? If he never did one more thing for you, you have breath in your lungs, and that should be reason enough to sing praises to your king. We see this very attitude in action in Acts 16, 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's the will of God for us to be thankful. Let me know in the comments below what God has done for you and why you are thankful. Number five, find an accountability partner or someone you can pray for. You could meet face to face, talk on the phone, send a message, but God doesn't want us to be alone. Matthew 18, 20 says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. One major benefit to this is that it's usually easier to pray for someone else's need than it is for your own. James 5, 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So now to go back over them, we have number five, find an accountability partner. Number four, begin to see it as a life attitude. Number three, what does the Bible say? Number two, you are going to pray again after this. Don't be so hard on yourself. Number one, you don't have to be afraid to talk to him.